come up with the comparison operators okay there are various kind of operators we will go on all those things so comparison operator is there now as from the name you can just uh, make a sense that comparison operator is something which will just compare up the two values the two types the two different kind of things and will break down it to a boolean value then okay the boolean value can be true or false right only two results can be there so it's right for comparison it's still people coming Any one more to come? My time is done. Okay. So comparison operators will compare just okay. So uh, how all the operators are being distributed and what are the works of all the things? Right. The very first one is the equals, right? Equals operator. You can say. Like let's say if I say three is equals to five, is this correct? Three is equals to five. No, obviously false. So how am I going to check this that whether three is equals to five? If that is three is equal equals to five. It will give me a result either true or false. Like if three is equals to five or not. Okay, so we'll get a result that is false. Positive. Uh, I'm getting low voice. Why? Okay, this is fine. Anyone just speak out? Hello, just I'm having a bit voice problem. I think. Okay. Uh, other than this, anyone ask what the should anyone just speak hello loudly? I just want to check the voice. Hello, hello? sir. All right. Fine. Uh, voice is fine. Okay. I hope things are clear because I was getting a very low voice from one side. Okay, fine. So this is equal to false. Okay. Now, uh, in various cases. This is not only that the values are being checked, or, or we are not always says that comparing uh, values is the important thing, right? The comparing types are also important. Like if I say 3.0 is equal equals to 3, true. This is a float, this is an integer, right? Say 3.0 is equal equals to. 3.0 or just you can say 3 plus uh, yeah, let it be 3 a 3 equal equals 3.0 true so the values are same but many a time students have a conception that uh, the values are not only the one thing that should be checked on right there should be the types to be checked so the type you see if I say the type of this 5 and then the type of this 5.0 this you can make a difference that okay the types are different but the numerical value what we are getting is same so that's the point okay right if you see 3 equals equals 3.0 it will be true because the values are same but if you go with the type checking of the same thing that will become false obviously because this is an integer and that is a float. So this is the very first one for equalities, okay, testing equalities. Next we come with non-equalities. For non-equalities we have exclamatory equals, that means not equals. It's something, one second. What is the meaning, the meaning of in, where I have written in, where I have written in. Oh, okay, okay. Are you asking this one? Someone is asking about this. In who is this? Uh, Anurag Kumar. Okay. Anurag, are you asking about that in? That yes, sir. Okay, those are inputs. Input number cell one, input number cell two. Those. Okay. okay, sir. For a corresponding inputs, outputs has been generated. Like, see, if you don't write uh, something as print. 
in those cases you will get an out read out why because it will tell you that this is the output now when you write print you know that you you just want to print something so in that case is this uh, does not give you any output like this like if i if say x equals 5 and i print x i'll get an out 5 but if i say print x and in that case i know that i want to get an output so will not get something out kind of thing okay i think that's clear okay so type is that for non equality it's very easy 3 is not equals to 5 it's very correct the type of 3 is not equals to type of 3.0 it's correct okay so things can be done like this you know all right fine now uh, various things can be taken with the cases because we say python is a very case sensitive language and when it is said to be a case sensitive that means that small x is not equals to capital x if you are writing x equals 5 the capital x is not going to x equals to 5 in HTML, we work with the things, right? Okay. Now, in this case, can anyone tell me if I run this, will I get an error or not? No, sir. Okay. But I say that I'll get an error, and that will be defined error. Name error. X is not defined. See? You have to define something. Error is saying, also is saying error. Yeah, obviously. Because see, you have to define this all. But that's fine that this is not uh, the correct statement. That is obviously that this is not equal to this, right? But the thing is that you have to define it. Otherwise, how this uh, Python is going to compare that what is small x and what is uh, capital X? So small x is defined, capital X is not defined. So you have to because small x see five has been defined just above somewhere yeah, here. So capital X to be defined over there. And now this time you run, you will get now how these are being compared. Anyone? How these are compared? Small x equals capital X. How? On the basis of something called as has to go. So if I say O R D of X 120 O R D of capital X 88 obviously this is not going to equals to that. Got it? <coughs> One second. These are just the ASCII values or in alright fine. So that is how these are being tested on. So if I say it's greater than that, like this is greater than this, so that means true. This is greater than this because because 120 is greater than 88. I think it's clear, right? The same operators now let uh, can be equal equals not equals greater than same. It could be like. this less than greater than now uh, things can be like 10 is if I say this 10 okay this is greater than as well as equals to 10 so now here are two conditions that is greater than and equals to the two uh, operators you can say on right what it means that the left operand and the right operand what are the things over there okay either one of the condition is to be true only then you are going to get a true result otherwise false how so let's check the first condition whether 10 is greater than 10 no false okay the second condition 10 is equals to 10 is true so in this case you will get a true result suppose we say 10 is less than equals to 10 
the first case 10 is less than is wrong the second case 10 is equals to 10 is correct true so if we say 10 is greater than equals to 20 now in both the cases we are getting a wrong result even the 10 is not greater than 20 and not even the uh, 10 is equals to 20 so in that case we get a false result so these are the basic operators that is equal equals not equals greater than less than greater than equals and less than equals so i think this is clear to everyone having any doubts in case of a strings and all these are compared on the basics uh, of their ords ordinals and all having doubts no. ORD okay let's first ORD ORD is something where, where we get an ordinal basically yeah, I can just give you help of an ORD if I could be ORD so return the unicode code point of one character string basically the ASCII codes you can see here. okay so let's say uh, you one second Just a second, I will let you know. If we go for writing other things, the alphabet is needed to be appeared. So, if we say make of once again, that be alphabet is equal to A. I'm just giving you a very quick shortcut for ORD so that you can get it very easily. So if I say the for i in a range of 0 to 36, hmm? yeah, uh, what to do after this is like. Let me see alphabet. Let's see what comes. One second, I think uh, A, B, C, D should be there, like something. Oh, okay, I'll print this alphabet. Spelling there, and that is from okay, 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 from B to that. Okay, press one that we have in the remote. Mm -hmm. All right, so first one is A from there, B, C, D, and going till Z okay so see uh, what ORD works you can see here it returns you the unicode uh, point of uh, some of the like characters and all okay so what I can see here is I'm making a loop okay basically from 0 to 26 okay CHR, uh, CHR also will let you know what are those things characters basically like for uh, these are basically CHR is the reverse of ORD you can say on there. Yeah, if I could give you a definition for this. 
unicode string of one character for a ordinal opposite of ordinal if i say uh, ord of j or x is 120 then chr of 120 is x reciprocals okay so with a number you can find a variable with a variable you can find its number we'll have a very uh, good program regarding these things these are very useful in various ways so this time having but can we make something as a list of all the numbers and all uh, let me try here if I say a l list a blank list okay and in this case so if we do it as for in a range of all this uh, let's say it as a l short name a l dot append oh sorry a l list dot just as focus like what is going on for now don't uh, focus on much of the codes okay uh, a f a l list is dot append a l okay and then we can make it a part of the alphabet and plus one so it will be a l can make it printing is not important here because I'm appending and I think that's done let's see a l list Yes, so we have A to Z alphabets. Okay, for now we have A to Z. AL, uh, uh, that is nothing. See, uh, that is the short name I am taking there as like uh, variable. We'll discuss on these things. Uh, uh, variable we have discussed, right? Yesterday or in the last class. Yeah, so that is a variable basically. I see. Okay, so uh, basically that is the program where I'm making a loop from 0 to 26 like we have from uh, 26 characters something in our alphabet. So we are making that and for every next alphabet I'm just adding to this list. I will learn all these things, right? And then I'm finding what? I'm for, uh, finding just the, uh, you can say up the ordinal, okay, ordinal of that particular uh, number plus one because that is important. We'll have a look on the program regarding the strings and all. We'll learn that. So for now, we have AL list all all these things, right? AL list. For all these AL, there are the ordinal numbers. How? So for let's say I in AL list. Print I and the ORD of I and the CHR of I uh, dot index an integer is required got the multiple bulletin types uh, okay let's remove this index of CHR is giving wrong I think this would work yeah so what you can see right now that A has got 97, B, 98, C, 99, B, 100 and so on. The source key code goes on. You just Google ASCII codes and all for all the alphabets you will get it there. Okay. So let's come to the string. I think that is clear right now. Clear to everyone. Having any doubts again? Let me ask. Repeat once again. Uh, what exactly you want to repeat and rock where you are having problems? Let's speak out. Just, just tell me what is the problem. I'll keep you the solutions. What do you want to repeat me? Oh, 
place of writing and you, know, you just speak program of alphabet uh, yeah that we will discuss uh, you don't focus on that right now you just see that these are the alphabets and that are the ASCII codes okay that will learn in the string part what exactly are those things how we get these things and all okay. that we will discuss but now that is not important uh, uh, this thing one asked me what is ORD, so I just uh, say that how it goes. Okay. All right. So, uh, how do we define a string? Anyone who can define strings? In a very short and easy manner. Although we don't go for the bookish language. So, now. Hmm. What, what? Some, someone said something, please repeat. Sir, group of characters. Group of characters. It's called a string. Hmm. Right. Group of characters is called string. All right, fine. That is a very simple one. Anything more other than this? Other than numbers. Okay. Other than numbers, everything is a string. Anything else? Okay, these two statements are correct. Uh, group of characters is better than other than numbers. Anything more? No. So, sequence of characters, it can be either literal or variable. Literal or variable, sequence of characters. Yeah, okay, fine. But uh, more easier. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what it is. Very easy. It's like something around it. Set of character of words. Uh, Suraj is also right. We uh, okay. All these things are correct. All of whatever we just got right now. All the definitions are exactly correct. So we can say at a group of characters, we can say other than numbers, we can say set of character of words, we can say something like, uh, can you say it as something inside the quotes? Right? Anything inside single quote, double quote, in the Python what we write. That can be a string anything inside this or inside this so all the characters group of characters what someone said group of characters group of characters enclosed within this quotes okay so all the characters which are written inside the single or the double quotes are the strings and for the triple quotes, what we get in the Jupyter is a dog string. We will also uh, go to see what is a dog string. Anyone know what is a dog string? So that's basically uh, a kind of a string you can say on a, like a comment. Basically, these are used in our official IDE of the Python. These are used as a comments. Okay, but we'll see uh, dog strings. <laughs> okay, fine. So, is this definition a problematic one with anyone? Yeah, comments. Comments, it is done with the like, IDLEs and all. In the uh, Python. Okay, let's go next, right? So, strings focusing on that. So, whenever, guys, you, whenever you declare anything other than the numbers, I'm again coming to the next statement also. Someone said other than numbers. So when you are writing anything other than the number, always try to write those things inside the inverted commas. Always. Otherwise, you will get a beautiful error called as a name error where you will get that this is not defined. Right. So this is also important because we will also be learning uh, something called as error and exceptions. Okay. 
so there you need to see that making a mistake will give what kind of error okay like let's say you made a mistake saying x is equals to x you made a mistake x is now declared small x but the capital x is not declared so you get a name error that is x is not defined okay got it my points so that is one error name that is name error all right so you will uh, get to see various kind of errors in between your programs errors are good the more errors you get the more perfections you will be getting all right so strings are the characters inside the course double quotes and all those things whatever you say now let's say i'm making something a variable i equals let's say name so uh, if i'm writing a name if i'm writing something uh, let's say this is name j or oh, let's say driving license okay so these are the type of a strings if you go on typing the type of i the type of j we get str okay and that's the output of so in strings we have two common things called as string replications and concatenation replication is something you can say going with the numbers string with combination with the numbers okay and concatenation is something you can say adding on values to it own values like if i say that x is equals to 5 that has been declared previously so that you can check x is equals to 5 right now okay if i say x is equals to x plus 5 and then i say x what should be the values what is going to be the value of x Ten. Someone said ten. Right. So that is wrong. Why? Because you are not uh, having a, a clear I. Because that is a capital X. It should be small. Else you will get an error. Okay. Okay. Fine. So X is equals to X plus five. Now X will be obviously ten. So to minimize this step, minimize this step. If I say x plus equals five, this will learn in assignment operators. Okay. Now I'm giving x plus equals five. That means that five is being added to x, like this one. Same. Okay. Like this. In the very first line, five is being added to the x. Okay. And then you are printing the x, so obviously fifteen. I think things are clear. Okay, so same goes with the concatenation in the string. Now these are for the numbers, right? So let's go with the concatenation. Something like uh, variable one. I say it as ice. Okay. The next is not like you have to write variable one equals to variable one plus something, right? You can just write this step, this one. How? The variable one plus is equals to. I'll say a cream. Okay. Now, whenever I'm going to print this variable one, this is going to say that. Ice, or you can say the cream hyphen cream is being added to ice. It's not added. Concatenation means not added. Concatenation means joining. Okay, merging. You can say. 
so what you are doing you are joining hyphen cream to ice getting the things okay so you will get an output that is ice cream ice hyphen cream exactly clear i think should be clear because these are the basics and this will help you a lot in further steps and programs we are going to do so we get results variable one as ice variable one plus equals cream and so does that you, you write your names uh, respectively let's say name is equals to i'm writing mine So I get something like this. Okay, the concatenations are being done like this. Okay, so these are the concatenations. Now, uh, at some kind, we can also say that if I say forty-five plus a string, so string plus the forty-five is not going to say it as a string replication case. Why it is not a replication case? Because the what the forty five what you are using in there is the character part. That is not a numerical part. Okay, so the not a numerical part means that that is enclosed within a string or within a code. So you can say that as a string. Okay, so string plus string, forty five string, right? But the same thing if you multiply other than the addition. And removing the kind of uh, string enclosements and all, if I say it as this, so I get an output of a string for forty-five times. Okay, now in between you can make patterns, giving hyphens. Or removing from one side, get things like there. Making a dot, anything, giving the patterns, playing something like this. See, okay. So these are replications. These are not concatenation because you are not adding something, or you are not joining something. You are not something merging up there. You are multiplying, so that is not done. Like uh, if you think like you can, we can subtract, no. For that, there are several different things. Like uh, for that, there are different things in uh, called as library, code library. For those who want to explore, you can go and see something called as simply. Oh, I'm just giving you a glance of that. So there, but uh, if you write something, five multiplied by five in Python, it is supposed to be. Yeah, in Python, what is the expected result? If I write something like this, five multiplied by five. What is the result? Five or five times. Five 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 five, obviously. But in this case, you will get the answer. A uh, module is not callable. One second. From simply. Oh, okay. One second. One second. Here I get a result. That is twenty-five. Okay. Even I will get a result if I say something doing a mathematics a bit off. See, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta multiplied by five, giving the respective results five and all those things, <laughs> right? So don't focus on these things right now because these are something based on libraries. 
not focusing on these things right so i'm just giving a glance that when we use normal the basics of the python the core basics and all there we see that is called a string uh, string replication right these things exploring with the numbers but that is not a fact that uh, strings cannot be multiplied with the numbers it can be done see above okay uh, i'm removing this because that is not of much use all right So is it uh, is it clear now, Rishita? Yeah, yes, sir. Rishita is saying something. Could you repeat replication? Who is? Uh, okay, fine. That is clear. So replications, I hope, is clear. Concatenation is clear, and so does it works. Okay. Len, uh, we have discussed in the previous class. All right. Coming to the boolean operators right now. Boolean operators have got three operators. That is and or not. And all works very in a cool way, you can say. So apart from all these three boolean operators, we have got something. Two operator called as binary operators. Okay, binary operators. So binary operators. Yeah, so uh, binary operators are something like where you can get some uh, binary results, discrete results, true, false, one, zero, <coughs> kind of, okay. So, let's see. Three kinds of them, and are not. Okay, so I'm making up a Magda call. So from these A and and R are B okay something wrong there. Binary because they give discrete or the binary results. Okay. Now how let's see. So something a truth table is called up here, which you might have read in the class twelfth. Truth tables. Okay. Now a truth table shows you every possible outcome for a Boolean operator. Okay. So if I make a truth table there. It could be like uh, 
you can say true I'm just printing up there things okay like true and true okay true and true is going to be true but the true things okay uh just making at a copy <coughs> i get it some more <coughs> sorry it's being the problem <coughs> so uh, it's false So uh, the truth table goes like, yeah, anyone knows? True, false. So only one is true and rest is false. This is a truth table. Okay. This is one of the table. Or uh, just leave me a minute, I'm making a table. <coughs> uh, or the true, true and false, right? Okay, leave it, I'll, I'll make it further, right? So in and what happens, we say it has to be multiplications. Multiplications in the sense like, true is one and false is zero. So, one multiplied by zero in the first one one multiplied by one giving the results one multiplied by zero <coughs> zero multiplied by one and zero multiplied by zero <coughs> one zero 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 okay So is it clear how things are coming? One zero zero zero. Uh, basically, the true, false, false, false results I'm talking about, right? I can give it as a something as equals would better work. The rest truth tables you will make on your own, okay? Easy, these are things easy. So, these are the results respectively, okay? All right, something is still wrong, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's fine. Same goes with the R, but in the case of a R, there is no multiplication, there is something called as addition. So you can add and then you can get the results for your truth table. Okay. And in the not case, stop. Yeah. So in case of not, you are going to give <coughs> just the negations. Like if I say not of true. So obviously it is false, right? Not of false is true. So same if I write, okay, not of true or not of not of true. That means first not of true is going to be solved and then the not of false is going to be solved. So not of true is false and then not of false is true. clear right it's very easy not true means false right obviously if it is not true then it is false and if it is not false then it is true simple one 
I hope things are clear. Okay. Uh, what does the second assignment giving you? There is what you see up. Second assignment. Second assignment. AI. B3 assignment D2 is to be checked uh, is that? Yeah. so in the second assignment you have questions regarding uh, ok ok you also have something called as calendars and all it's a few things go oh, and come here for some Okay. See, and if I give you a question that you have got some uh, uh, radius, okay, and you have basically, I say that you have a height. If I'm talking about a right angle triangle, I say that you have you have been given a side, okay, and you want to find out the second side, a third side. You have the two sides. You have to find the second side. How exactly you are going to get it? Like, see, the things are. Let's take regarding the square roots. That will be much easier for you. Or regarding the pi, something there. So let's talk about like if we ha if I have a radius, okay. So obviously I'm going to take in the float. So the user is going to give me the radius, and I'm going to get him the result as the area. So I need to find the pi r square for this radius, right? Area of a circle pi r square. So, what is the value of pi? 3.22 by, by 7. Okay, so I am writing 22 by 7. Also. Yeah, so 22 by 7 multiplied by r square. If I write 2.5, then I get a result 9.641. The second method could be that there is a module called as math. We'll learn that. So from math, you can import pi, and then you can print pi r square. Oh, someone is joining now. Probably it's a six-minute class left. <coughs> Still okay. So pi r square r is 2.5 and the results are there. So exact results are 19.63495 and here we get 90 point uh, something 6.42857 and just rounding off to the uh, values what we are getting here if we just say this to round off this 20. This round off. So if we round off the first half, uh, you can say, I'm sorry, not the alphabet numbers is same, right? So answers are pretty same, and it's not a much issue. So that is now. If you see pi, what is pi 3.14159, and all the things, all the values basically, what a pi is having up. There are several ways to find up the things. All right, so they, you will get one question in the second assignment for today. Uh, one more is given. There are something called as calendar. Uh, you can skip that part, I think, right? Because calendar, or just uh, let me give you how we can get a calendar. You just have basically to import a calendar. It's being given there to print a calendar. We'll learn all these modules. Don't worry. Uh, there is given that you have to go through the calendar of 2020 and 2021 there is a uh, program for calendar and the date okay leave it leave it for now we'll discuss it later on tomorrow might be okay 
so uh, till the boolean operators things are done and i think the second assignment can be easily solved is there more questions so uh, no i guess um, so the question number 7th and the question number 10th you ignore that and 12th also okay yeah uh, ignore the 12th also so that is also something about the substrings and the strings format okay so uh, yeah guys having any doubts in today's session anyone is having any such doubt you can ask right now pythagoras theorem yeah obviously x squared equals to p squared plus b squared uh, because we have made something here so i can just write up the equations like because i have imported the simple module so i can make an equation about like uh you said something was h square is going to be equals of at b square plus the p square and that's being the hypothesis theorem tenuous term sorry right h square p square b square yeah anything you want to ask regarding to this session Let me see the doubts of the guys. Set of characters and rug. So okay, she and <clears throat> she was asking why help is written. What is the use? Uh, she we help we write is just to get the official documentations or just the normal documentation of the Python what is pre-installed or pre-written when you write the other things. Okay. <clears throat> Next we have, uh, I think that's okay. So, yeah, no doubts. So, all right. So you can complete the second assignment and submit by six p.m. today. It's easy, right? Uh, you can go through it. It's very easy. Some theoretical things might be there. And some numerical are also given there. So it's like calculate the radius of a circle if the user inputs the area. Right. Now we calculated the area with the radius. There in the question you have to calculate the area if you calculate the radius if you are getting the area. Okay. So some questions you can skip up. So everything is not needed to skip up. Down. Okay. I have number of uh, no any assignment. Uh, when did you join Anurag? You are in the WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, you do one thing. You just uh, someone please again share all the links whatever I have sent in the WhatsApp so that he can get it in the WhatsApp group only. You just again share. It. Who will share? Uh, who will share? Who will share? Anyone just share it. Okay. No. Shivi's files are not opening. What's the problem going on? Okay, uh, I think many of you were trying to open the things in the mobile applications, in the mobile phones. That will not be done. You have to upload it somewhere where you can get the, uh, like, uh, the IP and YV files, basically. Files are not opening. That will be uh, done, right? If you download, you download those things, then you upload those things on the notebook like Jupyter or in the collab. Then you open. Like if, if I show you, what you have to do is <laughs> even the systems are not giving you. Okay, fine. What you have to do is uh, just go to the drive. Coming in one such assignment, assignment, one second. Let me see up here. Assignment and for any assignment, I'm just giving you right, okay? You can do one more thing. What is that? You can just go to the notebooks, right click, open with. If you don't get this option, 
Google Collaboratory. Then you can go on connect more apps. Okay. So connect more apps and then you can search here Google Collaboratory. So here just search Google Collab. For now, uh, for me it is being there. So I am not writing up again. <coughs> because it will not work. Because I have this, right? I have that uh, being installed. So I cannot just to it install again okay <coughs> you can come and then collaborate you can install <coughs> then you can just double click on this and you will get a collaboratory link and automatically you don't have to download even in the drive even <coughs> sorry but that works in the laptops and all desktops if you set up there okay all right then <coughs> go it's 5 1 start your assignment submit it right you will get the things accordingly here all right okay guys bye bye